Hi, this is Lauren Cheek from <clears throat> the YouTube channel Lornacopia. And uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you a comparison of uh, my DNA to a DNA sample from a Clovis Native American. The Clovis were the proto Native Americans. And uh, it's always been a little controversial, you know, that I say that I'm Native American to some people. Some people accept it, some people don't. They think I'm full of crap. Um, but Really what it boils down to is I should have three Native American ancestors, two that I know by name, one that I've seen in the census. Um, and obviously I turned out looking like I do. <laughs> and this is a video more for my cousins, my family members, my friends, for DNA matches uh, that I get from GEDmatch or from Family Tree DNA or other sources uh, to show this particular aspect of my DNA. And I put my DNA out there uh, because for instance, GEDmatch is a research uh, source for a geneticist, and I can compare myself with lots of different people across broad spectrums around the world um, who have DNA tested and find matches that way, and it's very, very cool. So what I'm going to show you today is extremely interesting. Um, you won't see this unless somebody does it on a documentary or something like that. Um, it's... a kind of a one-off and I'm availing myself and my DNA just so you can see what it's like. Um, but I wanted to thank uh, the Native American people for allowing scientists to do uh, DNA testing and the Clovis baby has been tested. Uh, his DNA is on file and they're respectfully reburying all the artifacts and the great goods and his body uh, later this month. It's right now. It's December 21st. It's winter solstice at 11 o'clock tonight. Christmas is five days away. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, family. Uh, Merry Christmas, all of you viewers. Uh, feel free to comment, you know, on this. I don't censor people. Whatever you feel about the video or me, you know, I'm immune. <laughs> and I actually like hearing what you say. Well, let me get to the to the point of the video. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you a match with someone that showed up on Jed Match along with several other people as a cousin of mine. And I'm going to show you how our DNA looks matched and blocked to someone that's supposed to be, say, a third, fourth, possibly fifth cousin. And then I'm going to show you the Clovis baby DNA and how much DNA we actually have in common. It, it's really mind-boggling. Um, the body is, I want to say, 12,500 years old. Oh my. So this is the Jed Match site. Um, and it's a research site. So they let you upload your DNA for free. So I've been able to upload my X and Y DNA to this site. So it's prevented me from having to DNA test further and do like autosomal tests and stuff. I can actually compare on here. So they have it all available and they just program it right out for you so you can see it in graphs. And uh, you, you can see actually by um, chromosome by chromosome a match with somebody else. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you first the guy that I match that's a cousin. And we don't know who our ancestor is yet. I have a genealogy. I don't think he has a very good genealogy, so we haven't found our match yet. Okay, so this is the graph at the top that shows you the code to the graph. If it's green, you're a full match. If you are yellow you're a half match and yellow indicates um, half matches are where your your particular marker on your chromosome are not exactly the same but they show a relationship and you're retaining part of a common dna um, strand so you know and dna is a c t g you know and if you look those up you can see what the chemical components are that make up each strand of dna but if you look at this you know yellow is going to be where we're matching green is going to be where we have a common uh match and then uh red is going to be where we don't match at all and it will be the same thing when i show you the clovis baby um so you can see we're cousins so we have some half matches that's dna we're inheriting from some common ancestry of some kind either on my mother or my father's side and then as you get down here to chromosome 9 although it's half matches we have a consistent block where he half matches me which shows kinship so we know that we are cousins definitively because of that, because we have a matching DNA strand where consistently each little blip on that chromosome 9 um, <clears throat> is 
half matched, which means we are probably like fifth cousins or something like that. He inherited part of the DNA and it matches mine. And this is true in every case where I match somebody, there will be a blip of a certain amount of chromosome that matches. Um, so that's him. And I'm just going to page down so you can see it in full, just so you can compare that to the Clovis baby. And here's the Clovis match, and you should be able to see the entire chromosome. I'm just going to page down slowly so that if you're a cousin or a family member and you're interested, you can pause uh, the video and actually see what they are. So this is chromosome 1 through 3, and as I'm paging up, I said you could pause on each one of these and actually see it, you'll see that oh, there's quite a bit of red in there, but there is yellow, which shows half matches with me and this Clovis baby. Um, there's a little bit of green in there on chromosome 6 that you will see on chromosome 7, and these show up as blips on my other DNA test, you know, where when there's a green match, they'll, it'll show us a spike. It'll show a Native American clump, you know, and you can see that <coughs> in some of my other videos. What's interesting when they did the research on the Clovis baby is they realized that the Siberian group that came over, that was the Native American group that is akin to all Native Americans today um, in South America, North America, etc. Uh, they realized when they did his uh, chromosome testing um, that that original group was a Siberian group that had actually intermarried with a Western Asian group, which were, you know, quite different genetically than them. They had had time to be separate and to evolve. So actually Native Americans have some common uh, European DNA as well. And that probably would account for some of the matches because I have ancient European lineages that are, you know, <clears throat> pretty well preserved. But anyway, so chromosome eight, chromosome nine, chromosome 10, chromosome 11. And then as we get further into the bottom, you'll start to see that on other chromosomes, I have much more commonality with the half matches. I don't have a single segment that's an exact match because I'm not Native American on my X or Y DNA. I'm Native American autosomally through ancestors that married into lineages and I inherited that DNA. So <clears throat> if we keep going down, you get to like chromosome 19. You see a little spike there. I think you can see that. I'm gonna slow it, yeah, chromosome 19. And then chromosome 20 and chromosome 22. So there I am matching a proto Native American um, who would be um, a little less uh, subject to genetic drift. You know, and you can look up that term to understand what it is. Genetic drift is when you gradually have people die out or you kill people off in war, and then you have a population that isolates or for whatever reason, whoever survives, you start to take on certain characteristics genetically and otherwise, and uh, it solidifies a group that stays uh, indigenous to itself um, with certain markers that show a little more um, of a certain uh, mutation with it. So, for instance, this baby is haplogroup Q. I'm haplogroup uh, R1B1A2 because I have a European uh, Y and uh, X and Y haplogroup, but I have Native American in there. Anyway, let me show you another cool thing right at the end of the video because this is so neat. Um, <clears throat> they have a thing where you can compare yourself to uh, um, other ancient bodies that they found. And I'm not going to go as detailed as this. I'm just going to show it to you in vague so you can see it. It'll be blocked where everything's on one uh, line, but it will show all of our common and uncommon DNA throughout all 22 chromosomes on that one line. I'll show that to you real fast. Oh, I forgot. It actually does like do it by 22 chromosomes. But these are all bodies that they have found throughout Europe or in America um, that have uh, their genome sequenced. So for instance, you'll see at the top, and I hope that you can see this. I mean, I, I can't tell because it's small on the camera, um, but I think I'm close enough. This Altai North Siberian person from 5,000 years ago is actually a Neanderthal. And you can see, look across the line, I'm gonna do it very slowly so that you can observe it and then you can pause it and actually see it. But you'll notice I have the typical percentage of um, 
Neanderthal DNA that you would expect in anyone that came out of Africa that's not, you know, sub-Saharan African. Um, and there it is, but it's cool to see it. So that's my Neanderthal DNA. I would actually expect it to be a little bit more because I kind of have a Neanderthal build. I'm stocky and muscular, you know, and a little bit fatty. <laughs> and my hips are big, you know, compared to my chest. I don't have the typical chest to uh, waist ratio that most people have, you know. And I have like, um, just to give you an idea, like, I have a 14 inch difference between my shoulders and my hips. You know, most people might have 10. Um, I'm a little broader up top and a little broader at the hips. <clears throat> but anyway, the next one is Denisova. And that is the Denisovan bodies that they found. Uh, here is a paleo uh, Eskimo uh, from Greenland. So that would be where some of my ancient uh, Danish non Viking European, but ancient uh, Finn type DNA is probably coming from. Um, and then they have all these other groups. And if you have a chance, uh, you can look these up. But if you look at Clovis, when you actually block it like this, which is right here, it's F99919. And you see it graphed out, like blocked like that, where they just show more condensed what your DNA looks like. You can see how kind of related we are to each other. But then this other one up here, for instance, from 8,000 years ago, this is probably coming from my um, Saxon DNA, possibly from some of my Viking DNA. It's definitely European DNA. Um, you'll see how similar the Clovis and they are together because we're, we're half matching on all of this. So that would be how you can see how the DNA of ancient people is, is considerably different than modern people, yet I still retain ancient DNA in large quantities. Now the Hickston group, which you are going to see right here, all of these Hickston ones are ancient Britannic Celts, like the Stonehenge inheritance, you know, at 1.3 million years, I mean, 1.3 thousand years ago, jump on the gun, fairly early after uh, the Roman invasion of uh, Britain when you still had a lot of British, British people, but uh, before the Norman invasion and I would say, let me think, thousand years ago, 1066. This would also be like a mixture possibly of people that uh, would be Britannic with possibly a little bit of, of, of Saxon DNA, because the Saxons made it there, I want to say, in the 800s to Britain. 800s, 900s, somewhere. I'd, I'd have to look it up. I'll leave it in the comments. But anyway, you see this. Uh, surprisingly, I'm from, my family is from Britain, but we're Norman, and I do have some <coughs> Britonic uh, lineage, you know, back in there. But look at the difference between, say, somebody that's, you know, from a more uh, Nordic Anglo-Saxon settlement, you know, it, and someone that's actually a Britannic and how much DNA I don't retain from that. So, <clears throat> um, that's kind of interesting to look at as well because it shows you the displacement of people <clears throat> and how your genetics uh, represent conquest or something of that sort. You know, and weirdly enough, you end up with things from other people. Anyway, I'm going to cut this short. Let me just page down here. I'm going to quit talking to y'all, but thank you for watching <clears throat> and look up some of these things. I'm going to page it over here so you can see the groups. And if you Google uh, the, the names under here, they will actually show up and I'll leave a link that shows an explanation of who all these bodies were, where they came from. But you know, you're looking at like 37,000 years ago, the Usht Isham Siberian is the originator group of all Europeans and Native Americans. And I think you can see that, let me see where my pointer is. Um, and you can see how much DNA, you know, I've retained from the Usht Isham. Um, let me just page it up to make sure that it's visible. And then I'm just going to slide across here real slow. So you can see it across the 22 chromosomes. Anyway, thank you for watching. And uh, I appreciate the viewership. 
and the comments and everything. Uh, and I'm so glad that I've met cousins through this and I'm able to use this um, as that kind of a, a touchstone to my family and to future generations. I hope YouTube's around long enough that when my great nieces and their grandchildren are around, they can see this and, and appreciate it. But uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. It was lovely talking to you. I hope it didn't go too long because I'm a blabber. But have a wonderful holiday.